Today, we are seeing the consumer world pushing the holiday season upon us earlier and earlier. And I would say that this consumerist push has created a common, unspoken or not, boycott against all things Christmas until traditionally the day after Thanksgiving, or in the case of the Church of the Holy Spirit, as we can see around us, the day before Thanksgiving. Where many break their silent protest, letting the Christmas cheer take flight within their lives. I also take part in this boycott. I keep the Christmas playlist on my iTunes, favorite holiday flicks, and all other forms of Christmas cheer and decorations at bay until that fateful day, which many refer to as Black Friday, when I allow the floodgates of Christmas nostalgia to fill my senses with the memories and joys of the holiday season. But why? Why do we wait? What is it that makes so many of us keep this strict discipline of anti-Christmas celebrations until that specific date? Christmas puts a twinkle in many an eye and a jingle in many a step. As we enter into the Advent season, with this, the first Sunday of Advent, we celebrate not only the anticipation of the arrival of the Christ child, but also the second coming of Christ. Listening to today's gospel, we are reminded of Christ's prophecies to his disciples, of his second coming. Jesus' words remind us that about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Many of us who have come to experience the Advent season year after year have come accustomed to its traditions, its colors, as we can now see, its songs, its plays, and so on. It may have even become monotonous to us, a season like any other, that comes at the same time with the same messages and the same expectations. May we be coming upon this, the season of Advent, asleep, going through the motions without realization of this season's true impact and meaning in our lives. Today, Mark reminds us, through the words of Christ, that we need to stay awake. Wake up! We are expecting something great and magnificent. In today's gospel, Jesus comes to the disciples using apocalyptic language to describe what is to come. He recycles the apocalyptic vision found in Daniel 7.13. The Son of Man is coming in the clouds to give the disciples a deeper understanding of what is to come. Through his use of Daniel, Jesus shares this message that the righteous will be persecuted and oppressed by the wicked, but that they must hold strong, for in the end God's power and glory will prevail, setting the world right again. The prophecies which Christ made to his disciples were indeed, indeed revealed within about that generation, as he predicted. With the Jewish revolt against the Roman Empire and the destruction of the temple in 70 AD. Many would argue that the destruction of the temple symbolized God's sealing of Christ as the Redeemer of the world. For the temple was no longer needed as a means for God's people to come to him. Now it is through Christ alone that all humankind can come to know God and have salvation. But what is it that we are waiting for today? The end, destruction, revolt, upheaval? We don't know. We do not know the place or the hour when these events will take place. And the events that will ensue are unimaginable to the human mind. Today, just as in the past, many are out there calculating, looking towards the Bible, the stars, natural disasters, to predict when the end will come. We hear of apocalyptic communities, which have pinpointed dates and predicted the end of time, Christ's return. We see movies such as 2012, The Island, Jericho, and the like. But all of these efforts are a waste of our time. And furthermore, they are dangerous to our lives as faithful Christians and human beings. Jesus lets us know in today's gospel that our efforts are futile. To try and predict the end of time, the return of Christ. Jesus also lets us know that this is okay, that we do not know and cannot predict that time. He reminds us that this is God's intent. We are not to know or try to make timetables, 
as he tells us earlier in chapter 13. We are to keep awake and wait for the coming. So how will we keep awake? It would seem to me that Christ is saying to us in this gospel reading that we should keep the season, the emotions, and the feelings of Advent close to our hearts always. Not only in these four weeks leading up to our remembrance and celebration of the Christ child's birth and entrance into our world, but in our daily lives. The celebration of the first Sunday of Advent marks not only the beginning of the waiting period for the Christ child, but also to remind us what we today are still waiting for and anticipating. Today, during the first Sunday of Advent, we are to identify with Mary, Joseph, the wise men, and the Jewish community of 2,000 years ago, who were anxiously awaiting the coming of the Messiah, just as we are anxiously awaiting the return of Christ. The celebration of Advent 1 and the purpose is to remind us what we are expecting, the coming we are anxiously awaiting. It brings us back to the height of expectation 2,000 years ago, so that we can know and share in the feelings of those awaiting the coming of the Messiah. It is an exciting time that we enter into today, not as a monotonous annual celebration, but as a revival, a reminder that we are to stay awake, and for some of us, myself included, that we need to wake up. Let us enter into the season of Advent with expectation, renewal, and rejuvenation, in our anticipation for the Christ child and for Christ's second coming, not only into the world, but possibly also into our lives. As Advent 1 marks the first Sunday of a new liturgical year, I would suggest that this is the perfect time to awaken our souls and open our lives to the coming of Christ. Let us be awakened by the familiar smells, sights, sounds, and stories that once brought us so much excitement as children. Maybe we can now look upon the retail world, not as having it wrong with the early celebration of Christmas, but as having it right. Every year I joke with someone that the Christmas prep decorations and so on in the stores are coming out earlier and earlier, and I always laugh, <coughs> thinking that if this continues, soon we will be celebrating Christmas all year round. Now I'm not endorsing an overly consumerist society, but would it be so bad to keep the Advent season close to our hearts all year round? What I am suggesting is this. We should reclaim and embrace the excitement and joy of the coming of Christ in our lives, reminding ourselves that he will be coming, and we do not know when. So let us wake up as we wait for the coming, and let us remember that it is not only the season of Advent when we should celebrate the but at all times. Let us welcome and wake up to Christ in our lives, so that when he does return, we are not asleep, but wide awake, unable to miss the magnificence that he will bring. <laughs>